GIF hopefully for you. Hopefully it's uh, it's your Friday and you're gonna get a four day work week or a four day <coughs> break from the work week. The blazer update. Just figured I'd go live, try this YouTube live, and see how this works out real quick. So. Oh, yeah. Up for 20 years. <laughs> A lot of good memories there. Street works. Pow! Look at that. So, got a nice four day work or weekend, and uh, unfortunately, as far as the blazer goes. You know how I do. I'll be back on the road. But we're going to work on it tonight. Uh, Vikings got my new shocks coming. I haven't made this video yet, but getting ready to cut all this out. Looks good in there, though, doesn't it? It's going to be crazy to cut it all out and cut it all up, but what the hell. We're going long travel. Maybe we'll go live and get some, uh, thanks, Michael. Maybe we'll go live later and get some, uh, get a little Q&A going or something. Remember, remember this video? All this. Tony McKinney coming up here. He's the way now. Uh, help us put this bad boy together. So we're going to put this together tonight. Put the brakes, the rear end, you know, the axles, center section, whole nine yards on there. So maybe we'll go live with it. Cage. Started on trans tunnel. It's my next major project. We dropped the body down over the frame a few inches. So I've been waiting for, uh, that bad boy to hit well i was i was waiting to find a case and then i was waiting for parts but uh extreme automatics got me taken care of on this gangster two speed 400 <clears throat> so now i know where my trans tunnel has to end up being Acme race engines. Got the bullet together. Did a great job for us. See wheel tubs going in. It's a lot of progress. It's a lot to the, uh, I don't know, should I drop it down? It's quite a bit in that chassis. That's all the hard work for me. Everything else is going to fly by been a lot of a lot of engineering going on back there I was gonna keep everything top secret but I really don't care it don't matter we'll do it I got a video that's already uh, I got a video that already shows the entire frame build what we did for it but we are legal look at that we are legal we can next 275 this bucket not that we'll ever be that fast but some of the no prep people are adapting those rules so there is there there isn't a class we're not legal for so that'll be that'll be good where the heck did the comments go that's uh so it's a uh thanks mag cow appreciate it so it's a six liter LS um, it's stock bottom end stock box stock heads let's say uh, stock crank that's been polished and balanced everything else is aftermarket you know literally stock casting on the heads uh, stock block Nothing real fancy, you know. 
uh, in theory, off the build sheet, should should be able to get us around 13, 1400 wheel. And uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, yep, sliders. Cow tracks, stain, cow, stain leaf springs, cow tracks. You can see the sliders back there. So, cut a bunch of the, uh, you know, a bunch of the frame out. Still reinforced with two, but just wanted to get that, get all that factory blah out of there, give myself some more space. Look at these monster axles. 41 spline. Turbo. Drama, my seat. VS Racing. It's probably hard to tell, but there's my hand beside it. I got a pretty big hand. 113 millimeter. 80 pound behemoth. <laughs> so, should be all right. Some door panels I bought. This guy, uh, Buddy of mine was building S10. He sold the project. Gave me a good deal on those door panels. It's my old faithful. I've had this bad boy for about 20 years. I can, I can bend everything from eighth inch up to two inch uh, tube on this. And I have all the dies between from eighth to two inch on that bad boy. Love that thing. I got a I got a video on that too. So I know you guys been telling me, give me some updates, you lazy prick. Which I've just been super busy, but I do have about a dozen Blazer videos of everything to get it to this point. Um, and I'm I'm taking after PRI, I'm not traveling anymore. We're gonna get the uh, we're gonna get the RV done. Uh, and we're going to get the blazer done so I can race next year. Um, yeah, as you can tell, I basically have everything to get it done. Uh, that's the bane of my existence right now. The thing I don't have is time. So I want to make sure that uh, over the next three, four months, I'm just going to day job it and... Uh, eat breathe sleep this thing otherwise you know 86 <coughs> it's a 86 I, I hate to cut it up as much as i have already and how much i'm getting ready to more i'm getting ready to butcher it up but because it's so uh, it really is super clean i mean there's like next to no rust on this thing but it is what it is I'm going to leave it stock floor pans because a lot of these classes require stock floor pans. It's my cell phone, Kevin. Um, sorry about that. It's losing focus. <coughs> so I am. I do got to keep the stock floor pans for a lot of these classes, which I, I don't. It's no prep. I don't know what the hell that matters for, but I digress. But a lot of most of them do allow you to back half it, so. Where that seam is right there along the factory seam there we're going to cut that out and get rid of all that back there now give me a lot more room for uh, activities as it were but uh, i mean like i say you can tell what an amazingly clean blazer this thing was to start with no rot no rust i hate to uh chop it up i like i like for the good ones to stay good but we're gonna chop the hell out of her
So, I don't know. I'm going to try this and uh, I don't understand the floor plan and the firewall crap. And then you see a chassis car out there racing. You can explain that to me. You know, here's the thing. I've seen stock floor pans. So, kind of goes like this. There's a lot of local by the homey stuff that comes into play on that. And then their buddy shows up with a full-blown quote-unquote pro mod, but, you know, sheet metal floor. I got to go open this door. I'm losing service. Just Bear with me for one second here. This place is a catastrophe. <coughs> so it stays a little cluttered, unfortunately. Uh, I've seen real deal street cars whoop the shit out of full-blown chassis cars uh, more times than not. So I don't know. I don't understand the logic either to me. Let everybody run, let their nuts hang, so to speak, and uh, let's just see who's the baddest of the bad. But uh, there's a quick catch up. Like I say, you'll start seeing a ton more uh, update videos. I'll go back through and do all the videos I did over this last year and start getting them uploaded here in the next couple weeks. Chassis on this thing is uh, meets all the rules. But you can kind of see in there. We still have the stock frame rails as required by everyone. Uh, so we went right to the edge of every last person's rules so that we could find that we thought we might want to race uh, in their events and uh, to make sure we stay legal. But, like I said, I got a video on how I did all that. I probably, ended, the way I did the chassis, uh, it's a lot stronger. Probably shaved off 40% of the weight of the stock frame rails. And gives me a ton more space for activities. You know, you saw that honk, big honking turbo I got to fit up here. So it's nice to have all this extra space. I'm um, going to remote the radiator to the back, so it was nice to be able to make all that tube back there to accommodate that. And, uh, you know, the fuel cell's got to go in the rear. So a lot of practical, a lot of practical design, but also some in, a little bit of hillbilly engineering in here. But, all right. We're going to test these live feeds out, but uh, appreciate it, Buckeye Bandit. Trying, trying. Clearly, I'm going to have to get Wi-Fi out here in the barn. I, I cut out a few times, and I, I apologize for that. That's annoying. So clearly, I'm going to have to get a Wi-Fi extender or, or something out here. What's up? Hey, Dave. How you doing, brother? Thank you. It's getting there, man. It's getting there. But yeah, we'll go live a little too now this winter. So you guys can have updates and maybe we'll just go live as we do projects that are an hour long or something. And uh if you guys think that'd be something you'd be interested in. Um uh, I I'm hoping to I'm hoping to be in florida or the carolinas by the end of february beginning of march testing somewhere out there on the streets with that you know in ohio more likely than not i wouldn't be able to do any street testing uh at that time frame but march 1st i guess if i had to put a date on it matter of fact little unconventional some unconventional items but i like gussets so let's do this
March 1st, 2023. So there, it's written down. So there you go. Thanks for asking that question, Michael, because I kind of put a soft time frame on it, but that's better for me to have a hard date and a hard uh, deadline. So March 1st, 2023, I want to be, you know, barring any extra uh, crazy family circumstances or anything. That's when I want to make the first pass. No later than March 1st. So. 22 I'm living in the future I'm living in the future already <laughs> thanks for uh, 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 22 <laughs> I don't know why I guess I'm getting ready for the next year <laughs> uh, Michael I might just have to have clearly I need Michael to just follow me around and keep my head out of my ass <laughs> oh no I've, do, I've done that too off too frequently here lately man i don't know what the, my deal is on this i guess i'm just ready i guess i'm just ready for the blazer to be done so i just want to hurry up and be 2022 already kevin uh i'm building a 2000 s10 with a 496 move the engine back new firewall back all floor stock uh, damn it. Where can I find more on all the rules? Um, so the most, the no prep people that have the most stringent rules really, um, all base their stuff off X275 rules. So that's where I went and, um, that's where I went and looked for the rule books. And everything I'm doing is there. Like a lot of them don't want to let you move the motor back or any of that stuff. But I've been working. I've been I've been whittling a lot of people down. And I'll tell you, in Ohio and surrounding areas, you're gonna see a lot of people next year going with our rules, which is still roof and quarters, 28105. This is for small tire, uh, obviously. Uh, no wheelie bars, and no more than. Uh, Two twenty-eight by ten, no all-wheel drives, basically, or no more than uh, I can't do the math in my head, but no more than two twenty-eight by ten five uh, tires worth of horsepower-driven rubber. Um, so was that 50, 57 inches total, uh, or whatever it ends up being? So. Like a Waffle House, absolutely. I'm blaming it on that because I haven't had it since Sunday, which it should be a crime in and of itself. Um, but yeah, so I think that'll wrap it up for this one. Appreciate you guys uh, popping in and chit chatting. And like I said, leave it in the comments, man. If you think if I can get some like hour long projects together and go live, is that something you guys would be interested in seeing how I'm doing things? Uh, you know, one thing I don't, I really haven't shown very much, not that I'm the greatest fabricator in the world, but you know, I've done all this. I didn't, I mean, I didn't make that. That's a, you know, that's a kit and those are TRZ arms, but I installed all this. There's a video on how to install the K member and everything, but I did, you know, those are my bars I built from scratch. Uh, you know, in the chassis, some of those, some of those chassis bars are pretty cool in the back. Some really tight bends where I had to do a double. Uh, Kevin, I'm, I mean, I would love to go in the fours, but I'm, I'm really looking for low fives, to, uh, consistently going low fives, to be honest. Um, so hopefully we can get there pretty quickly. Like this is a pretty tight, this is a pretty tight profile that the chassis, the stock 
frame rail has so that to do two bends uh, real close together which that's a nice tube that's a nice product I was pretty this one's just a little it's a little wonky so I redid it I don't know but like I said you'll see some other things it's all DOM or uh, mild some of it's chromoly but you'll see some things like I like gussets I like sheet metal gussets I know it's not a common thing in drag racing but uh, I love the saddle gussets you know I love I love these there's so much surface area there and it makes the joints so much stronger for just a, a a dollar more per joint you know what I mean and then you don't have a big tube going from you know here to here or here to here blocking your view and you're just as strong and uh, honestly uh, and additionally for me to be honest it's kind of an easy button allows me to be a little bit lazy like I said these are pre-made they're like a dollar I don't have to measure and cope a pipe and and uh, you know figure out all that other crap I can slap one of those in a corner clamp them down hit them with the mud gun and uh, MIG weld away. You can see I'm a fan of the uh, axing. We're gonna have funny bar, uh, funny car cage in here too, and we'll bring that X over. Our down bars will be X'd in the back and come down. I just, if I ever roll this, man, I just, I want to walk away. Uh, you know, that's the main thing. I've seen enough friends uh, have ac bad accidents this year, and uh, it's, it really isn't a test—a testament to more bars is better <laughs> in my book, you know. So this started off as a 12-point cage, um, a 12-point cage kit, and then I've added the doors are X'd as part of the kit. But I've added an X in the roof, X in the down bars. You know, we'll have bars coming off of here. Um, and if I don't know, it's cheap insurance. Tube and welding, a few extra bars, a little extra welding. It's cheap insurance to make sure you can go see your family at the end of the day. If by some freak miracle this thing's ever fast enough to go, 130, 140, 150 in the eighth, and I roll it on the big end. Like I say, I like to just have some bumps and bruises when it's all said and done, and still be able to uh, go home to my family that evening, if, if at all possible. So there's my there's my soapbox. Uh, buy more bars. Don't cheap out on that stuff, man. But uh, well. Then we'll do that. I'll set that up. I got to get internet out here. And then I'll set a couple of cameras up or something. I'll figure out how to do it like the fancy YouTubers do it. And we'll do some projects. You know, uh, one of the projects I got to do is how I'm going to connect these two together. I still want this to be removable. Um, so the small saddles... I got from Jags, but part of them, and then I also bought them, which I, this is where I get a lot of my tabs from, and, and I love this place. A, it's all of their stuff is made in America. You know, they use American steel, they use American workers, um, this they're out of Michigan, and every time I order something from them, I have, I have my parts in like two or three days. Um, and they have a bazillion brackets, tabs, whatever you need. 
gussets. So that's where I get the saddle gussets from, both styles. But that's also, uh, well, like I said, I did get these from Jake's, but they do also have these, this style of gusset, which is nice. But I mean, they have everything. Uh, here's a here's a nice upper shock mount. This is what I'm. Uh, this is what I'm getting ready to use for the long travel suspension. And I believe this this whole thing you see in my hand here was uh, four or five dollars. I mean, it's not even worth thinking about making for that much. I mean, maybe six bucks, but you know what I mean. It, it was just not worth thinking about not worth trying to make yourself i think these are like two bucks a piece or something a dollar or two a piece they're all really nice really good consistent quality like you know if you have two parts look how beautifully those line up i mean they're bent the bend consistency on point I mean, it's all super high quality stuff but these i've just been using these guys for 20 years and i love their stuff they're in no way shape or form a sponsor or you know i mean uh a and a manufacturing it's not done anything for me I, I this is how they ship their stuff in these bags and i mean you see i got another I got another S10 we're getting ready to build a pickup. So I got a million different tabs. You know, we need them for every panel tabs. Uh, square guts, you know, square uh, gusses for rectangular tubing, square tubing. There's another corner gusset. And these are nice because you can put them, you know, you can put them inside a joint. You know, so you can put them inside a joint like that to help stiffen something up. Or if you have something like this, you know, basics, ba you know, you can come in like that on the outside and plate it to reinforce it. I mean, these are just nice for a whole bunch of different things. Or just a universal tab if you just need to come off of something and drill a hole somewhere, goofy even. And these things are like 50 cents or a dollar. I mean, you can't, it's, it's, you just can't even, it's not even worth trying to make yourself seat belt stuff. You know, again, maybe a buck. It's not even worth thinking about. Uh, same thing here, you know, two or three dollars on this one, probably. Trans, uh, it's probably like four or five bucks. I, I mean, but being that it's toxic, you know, I did have to get a couple of these. I have absolutely no idea where I'm going to use them yet, but they're way too big for a race car. This is more for like a rock crawler or something. <laughs> but it is toxic, right? How could I not do this? So I bought a handful of these, but these are like a buck or two a piece, and they're cool looking. Whatever, race cars aren't, they don't have to be just functional you can have a few cool cool things in there right so yeah handful of those i don't know anybody got any, i don't know where to put them i just bought them because i thought they were cool if you got any suggestions leave them in the comments below so yeah i mean that's where we get all that stuff i love that place so anyhow i appreciate you guys tuning in i just thought i'd give this a try and see how it worked out seem to consistently be at about 10 people so seven to ten people popping on and off here and uh so yeah over the winter we'll do that i'll make videos and all that like how we normally do but we'll do some live stuff and i don't know much in life i don't know much about fabricating or cars or any of that stuff but yeah kevin ohio grudge racing we have a Facebook page, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. We're on all of them. <coughs> so yeah, I don't know much about fabricating or any of that stuff. I'm not a, I'm definitely not a Jesse James or any of that by any stretch of the imagination. 
but I do know a few things and uh, I'd be happy to share those with you because somebody shared them with me I wasn't born with the knowledge and stuff like this is kind of a I don't know it feels like it's starting to become a lost art people don't like working with their hands much anymore unfortunately uh, these younger generations majority of them seem to like being video game developers or something maybe maybe he's cleaned up to shoot a video on this we're going to go in depth with uh, Tony McKinney on the assembly of this so you guys can understand everything how to line everything up how everything works um, the whole nine yards I bought this kit I mean I, so we're going to go uh, rotor to rotor you know Assemble it fully, put the uh, rotors on, put the, it's a Mosier. Everything is Mosier. Uh, I got it from Tony McKinney. Um, he's a dealer. So I called and told Kenny, uh, called and told McKinney <laughs> what I wanted. And that my main goal is, uh, Thanks, Johnny. I will, buddy. And that my main goal was, so the last time this thing was out, the last year it was out, we were just kind of halfway getting fast. And I broke the transmission three times, and I broke the rear end three times. So this is supposed to be uh, good up to uh, 3,500 horsepower, which I'm going to make less than half of that. And this is supposed to be good for 3,500 horsepower. And again, I'm going to make half of that, which is why it's taken a few years, you know. Uh, Tony, Tony gave me a real fair price on this when I bought it. But I bought all the best of the best stuff, you know. And it still was around $3,600. Uh, 41 spline axles all that stuff but still thirty five hundred dollars is you know it's a chunk it's a decent chunk to save up and spit out and you know same thing here it took me a long time to save up for that one that's about a uh just under ten thousand dollar transmission you know it has any and everything in there and when I was talking to Lonnie and Mike Turner uh, about it, that, which those two guys built it, they, they told me they'd dare me to break it. And I said, I will. I'll do everything I can to break it. And they said, you'd never break it. So uh, we'll go, we're going to do it. I have an in-depth video on that one already. I just got to get it edited. They'll tell you all the juicy details and all the what that what was done on the inside of it and everything you know the parts we used to make sure it was going to be reliable and uh as close as we could possibly get to uh bulletproof <laughs> but uh yeah so all right i know i kept babbling for another five six minutes here after i said i was getting off here but i am getting off here this time because as you can tell i gotta clean up Tony will be here in about an hour, and yeah, this place is a pigsty. So, I just want to get some feedback, and I'll uh, we'll definitely do that. I'll start thinking of some ideas of some stuff, some projects, or you see what's left, which is a lot. Um, so you tell me in the comments below what kind of things would you guys like to learn about on like a. Uh, one hour live feed and maybe i could set it up where we were doing it every saturday morning or sunday morning or something like that and we just have a schedule for the next three or four months and you guys give me topics of what you want to see done and i can make sure i schedule that work that i'm doing uh, for that time frame then so if there's anything you're working on on your vehicle that you got coming up and 
you want to know how to do it, uh, leave it in the comments below. And if it applies to what I'm doing, we can make a live video about it. That way we can have some Q&A going on and uh, help you guys get some of the... I know videos are awesome, but uh, sometimes, man, I watch a video and somebody could be as complete as possible, but there's still that one thing they didn't think of that maybe doesn't necessarily apply to their project or isn't a, 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 a significant thing in their mind on their project, but is a huge thing for you or for me. Um, so, you know, I think, I think going live while I'm doing certain projects probably could be beneficial and low tech. Cause like I said, I'm, I'm just a dumb hillbilly from Ohio, but low tech informational and helpful for some of you guys. So, and, uh, you guys have a great TGIF, man. Hopefully nobody has to go to work until the, uh, Monday. I'm going to, uh, I don't have to go back to work till Monday. I'll be working on this thing tonight and tomorrow. Then tomorrow night I'm heading down to Hardensburg, US 60 for Black Friday. One of the biggest gangsterous races out there uh, this time of season, this time of year. And then we're staying down in Kentucky and Saturday we're going over to uh, Litchfield for another no prep race. So if you guys are in a traveling mood or down around Kentucky and neither of those places are too far, come down and see us. Uh, have a great time with us and uh yep everybody have a happy thanksgiving man can you believe i got i painted these old shit five years ago six years ago that's hydro graphics i don't know what to hell i'm gonna miss those fenders in that hood and there's the tailgate over there i never did get around to painting the rest of the body but i got all new stuff all new fiberglass stuff for the front but uh hell yeah jeffy bring your butt down we'll see you guys want to uh you guys gonna stay and go saturday too ruben coming with you hell yeah johnny We'll see you down there, brother. It's going to be fun. Did you get a hotel? Did I send you that stuff for the hotel, Johnny? Oh, well, Jonathan Lawson, you got to come up, man. That's, that'd be great. Uh, it'll be a great time, man. It's going to be a great time. Two, two badass races, but two completely different surfaces. And probably, for the most part, all the same cars. Uh, Black Friday's paying out about 20 grand at this point, and uh, and the cash days of Kentucky's paying out six thousand plus the buy in money. So, there's gonna be some hitters, there's a ton of hitters coming, uh, to both of them, and uh, they're gonna be scrapping. It'll definitely be worth the drive. If I don't know, it's four hours for me, and I'm going for both days and getting a hotel. and the whole nine yards so we're gonna have some fun but uh anyway you guys know the deal i'll babble forever stop asking me questions i gotta go <laughs> yep i'll send it to you here uh in just a minute johnny um so if i don't talk to you guys happy thanksgiving um have a great hopefully i guess hopefully everybody gets four days off have a great weekend. Spend some time with your family and gobble to your wobble. James, we'll see you, buddy. Uh, have a good one.